Hey everybody, this is Amy from Amy in the Kitchen and I am so excited to bring this recipe to you today. Um, this recipe is for canning chickpeas so that you can pull a jar off of your shelf at any time and make a delicious, healthy snack for yourself. Um, this is the finished product, which I am going to have a separate video on um, how to actually make the hummus once you've canned your chickpeas. So look out for that. Um, this hummus um, has a little bit of a, a red hue, and I just wanted to show you. I use this um, spicy red tahini, and that's why it looks like that. But um, I'll show you a couple different ways to make it. You can make it with or without oil, and yeah, it is really, really good. So let's go ahead and get started. I am about to start canning up chickpeas specifically for hummus. Um, we're going to put um, chickpeas and some other ingredients into our jars. We're going to pressure can them and that way when we want hummus we can empty the jar into the processor, add a couple other ingredients that you might want to uh, flavor your hummus with and you will always have um, nice good healthy jars that you made on your shelf that you can use to make hummus. Um, so let's get started. Okay, just so you know, the um, chickpeas, I uh, rinsed them and I boiled them uh, for two minutes and then I let them sit for an hour. Then I rinsed them and I put them back into some fresh water and boiled them for 30 minutes. And then I um, drained and rinsed them again. Uh, this is the method from the um, National Food Preservation website. I will leave a link to that in the description box below so you can go there. You always need to check that website before you can anything. So um, I'm canning this according to their instructions for beans. And this is my own recipe, but because we're pressure canning um, and I follow the instructions on canning beans, um, this should be pretty safe, but always can at your own risk. This is important to do everything um, the way that they suggest so to prevent botulism and mold and or, or anything safety-wise with your food. So because I'm pressure canning, um, I've got my jars. They're clean. They don't have to be sterilized, but they are clean. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding the chickpeas, um, my lemon preserves, uh, I'm sorry, preserved lemons. I, don't, I keep saying that backwards. But um, this is going to be our lemon flavoring for the hummus. Uh, some minced garlic. And I think I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do eight jars total. And I think I'm going to do um, four of them with those three ingredients. And then the next four, I think I'm going to add some uh, rosemary. So give it just a little bit different flavor. So I have two different flavors to work with because you can also use hummus for salad dressing. If you take it and you mix it with some other things, it makes a great um, sauce for, you know, salads and, and other stuff. So anyway, let's go ahead and get this going. So I'm going to grab a little funnel and we're just going to fill these jars up. Now I'm going to fill these up just not quite all the way because I'm going to put the other ingredients and then, then fill some more with the, um, the chickpeas. And I'm dropping it everywhere, but that's okay. I always put a towel down to make everything nice and clean. All right, so what I'm going to do is, this is lemon, uh, preserved lemons. They have been uh, basically marinated lemons with salt for over 30 days. These are a few months old. I keep them in the fridge and I use them anytime I want to add lemon flavor. So to each jar, um, and I do like my hummus on the lemony side. So this is kind of like add as much as you want type of deal. So um, I don't know, probably about a a teaspoon to each jar is what I'll add. And just a little 
bit more. Okay, so now we've got our lemon flavor, and um, I also like garlic in my hummus, so let's let stick in. Ah. Okay, so I'm going to add probably a heaping teaspoon to each jar. So as this cooks, this will all kind of melt together. There's going to be some broth in there. But um, when you open these cans up to actually make your hummus, um, what I would do is reserve the liquid, don't throw it away. Um, because if you wanna make a hummus without oil, you can just add that liquid back in and make it the uh, consistency that you would like it. Um, again, I'm not adding any salt because the lemon preserves are full of salt, so I don't wanna add any extra to that. Um, so with these, let me go ahead and top these off with some more chickpeas. And you want to leave about a, um, an inch of head space with your liquid and everything. But this is kind of like my take on the modern canning kitchen. Um, I know a lot of people are ingredient canners, which I, I do like to can ingredients, but um, I like to have these kind of things on my shelf too because I, I try to eat fairly healthy and you know, beans take a long time to cook. So if you can make up a batch of these beans uh, and make your own dips and stuff very easily, like I said, you're literally gonna just dump this into a food processor, blend it up, and then you have a hummus dip for your veggies or chips or sandwiches or whatever you want to make. Okay, so I have some hot liquid over here and this is just plain water. You can use a broth if you want to, but for this, I am just using plain hot water. And I've got my pressure canner um, getting ready so the water in there is warm. You always want everything to be kind of the same temperature. So right now I'm debubbling the jar. And with the lemon and garlic, it already smells amazing. <laughs> you want an inch of headspace. This is the um, what you measure with. So you just want to make sure that that liquid is right at an inch. And that one could just use it a bit more. And I always measure over and over again. I don't I don't like to worry about making mistakes. Like I said, canning is is a very rewarding um, thing to do, but when you put a lot of work into it and then one of your lids out seal and it's just kind of gets upset. So it gets me upset. Um, I've got a little bowl of vinegar and a napkin. So now that I have my liquid in there, I'm going to wipe off the rim of the jar and that's because you want uh, to make sure it's clean and no seasoning or salt or oil. Run your finger around it to make sure there's no nicks. Get your lid. And this is hot. I'm going to. You want finger tight. That's all you want. So let me go ahead and get this one. You guys, this is really how easy canning is. Oh, I may have put too much in that one. To be honest with you, I don't even um, usually make mine with uh, pre-soaked beans. I'm going to take some of that liquid off of there. So I know that's going to be too much. Um, I can a lot with just straight up dried beans. I don't soak them or do anything. Um, and it has always worked for me, but because there's no recommended um, way of doing that, that's why I'm not showing you that method. So, so you do have to do a little bit of work ahead of time, but my canner fits um, 16 wide mouth pint jars. So I like to do 16 or whatever I'm making or a variety of stuff, which is what I'm going to do with this 
uh, canner. And let's see, I'm gonna go put these in and I will be right back. Okay, I am back. I'm gonna go ahead and get these two done and then I'll bring you back and I will show you the, the four that I make that have the rosemary in it. Okay, so um, I've put, for the ones that I'm gonna have uh, rosemary hummus, I put the chickpeas, the lemon, uh, the preserved lemons, some garlic, and now I'm just gonna sprinkle some rosemary into each jar. Um, I'm not gonna worry about cutting it up or anything because it will do that when it gets in the food processor. Um, you don't need a whole, whole lot, maybe, I don't know, a pinch. This is fresh rosemary, so it's gonna be a little bit stronger. Some people don't can with fresh herbs. I do, I don't have any issues with it, but um, I tend to like really, really strong flavors in my food. So for me, you know, the more seasoning, the better. <clears throat> okay, so let's go ahead and finish adding the chickpeas. And you want your chickpeas to be just right under that, the rim. Uh, a line of that and this is two pounds of chickpeas uh, so it's filled up it's making eight pints pretty much exactly um, so I'm just gonna spread these out evenly Okay, um, we're going to go ahead and move this over. Just make it a little bit easier for me. This is hot water. Okay. Always make sure to debubble. You never want to get um, bubbles trapped in there because it messes with your headspace and always measure and that's perfect. Again, use a little bit of vinegar to wipe the rim. Check for nicks and finger tight and that's hot I should be using a hot pad that's finger tight okay so I'm gonna go ahead and finish um, getting the rest of these done and put them in the pressure canner and I'll be back okay so <clears throat> I um, have got all of my jars in the pressure canner um, I have the all-american 921 and so I can fit two stacks of uh, one, one pint jars, eight if they're wild mouth, and nine on each level if they are regular mouth. Um, with this particular canner, you need to lube the edge of it with some oil. I just use olive oil. And you want to make sure that it's even all around. And this is already warming up, so it's, it's pretty hot. So you really want to be careful with these because they get really hot to the touch on the outside so what i'm doing is i'm making sure that the 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 lid is is evenly on um okay so with this canner you want to take opposite sides and screw them down not tight yet you want to get them all on first okay then you go back and you tighten them nice and tight. Okay, there's a little arrow here that you line up um, to make sure that the lid is on correct. So now that I have the lid on, I'm going to crank my burner up to high. Now I do cook mine on a glass cooktop. Um, they say that you need to, to look at your manufacturer's warranty for that. 
I've been doing it. I haven't had a single issue with it. So just take precautions and make sure that you, you know, look and see if that's something that you can do. But um, let me get close in here and show you the dial gauge. Okay, as you can see, this has a dial gauge and it also has a weighted gauge. Um, uh, let me see if I can get to my little gauge and put it over here. This is a weight that I will put on top as soon as this uh, is ready. Um, I live over a thousand feet in elevation, so I have to use 15 pounds of pressure. Um, if you look on the national uh, website for food preservation, it will tell you what time and um, uh, processing time and pressure to use for where you live. So you really need to go check that out. Where I live, I'm a little over a thousand feet in elevation and I'm using pint jars. So they say for me to uh, process at 15 pounds of pressure for 75 minutes for pint jars. If I was doing quartz, it would be 90 minutes. So what we're looking for right now is um, I've turned this on high and it's gonna start building up pressure. And then this little uh, vent right here will start, um, steam will start streaming out of there. Once that has um, been a real steady stream for 10 minutes, then we'll go ahead, place our gauge on, make sure this comes up to 15 for me. Uh, and then once it, it's up to 15 pounds of pressure, we'll start our processing time. So we're gonna wait for this event. Once it starts venting, time it for 10 minutes, put the gauge on, bring it up to 15 and start the processing time. So I will bring you back as soon as that is up to the right pressure. All right, you guys, I know that you cannot see the steam coming out of here, but I'm sure that you can, can hear it. Don't do this at home because guess what? It's very, very hot. You don't want to burn yourself. But anyway, the steam is coming out. So um, I'm going to go ahead and set my timer for 10 minutes. Once that has been um, venting for 10 minutes straight, I'm gonna go ahead and put my weight on and wait for it to come up to pressure. So I'll be back. Okay, you guys, timer is going off. So it is time to put our weighted gauge on. I said I'm 15, so Carefully put that on so I don't burn myself. So now um, we are going to wait for it to come up to the proper pressure. Um, my altitude is requires 15 pounds. So I'm gonna wait for this dial to come up to 15. About the same time that it comes up to that 15, this is gonna start rattling. So I'm gonna listen for this noise and um, I always stay really close by. You don't ever want to leave your canner while you're pressure canning. Um, it can be dangerous if you don't follow all the correct procedures. So you really want to take it seriously. So I'm going to wait for that to come up to pressure. And at that time, I will start my processing time for 75 minutes because I'm doing pint jars. So I will see you as soon as that gets to the right pressure. Okay, everybody, I got you really in close up so you can see what's going on here. As you can see, I'm up to 15 pounds of pressure and you can hear the rattle on the weighted gauge there. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my processing time right now for 75 minutes. It's an hour and 15 minutes. And I'm gonna keep an eye on this gauge I need to turn my uh, stove down a little bit. Um, I think every stove kind of has a sweet spot of where where it needs to be to keep at the right amount of pressure. Um, on mine in particular, it's pretty high. It's, uh, it's about eight. So um, I'm gonna gradually just turn this down, making sure that it doesn't drop below that 15 because if it drops below, whatever your 
um, pounds of pressure needs to be, you have to restart your timer all over again. And that's definitely not something that I want to have to do. So I will continue to watch this and uh, I'll be back whenever they are finished processing. Okay, you guys, guess what? Processing time is up. The gauge has come all the way down to zero. So it's time to remove the weighted gauge. You can see, or you can hear that there's no more steam coming out. So that means the pressure is all the way down to zero. <clears throat> and we can go ahead and take the lid off of the pressure canner and let's see what we got. All right, what do we have here? Oh, another rosemary hummus right here. All right, so there's the four rosemary hummuses and then I guess the last four things are just the plain hummus and I will I'll bring you in close up so you can see these I'll post the recipes in separate videos but all right everybody we are done canning our chickpeas uh, for hummus. This is the one that we added the rosemary to, and this is the one that's plain. So as you can see, they're still nice and bubbly. They just got out of the pressure canner, and I'm gonna let these cool down overnight. In the morning, I will remove the rims. I will make sure each jar is sealed properly, and then I'll wash the entire thing in, in hot soapy water, dry it off, label and date what it is. Um, in one of my upcoming videos, I will show you how to take a jar of this and use it to make a very delicious hummus dip. So I will see you in the next video. Bye.